online relationships should lead to offline relationships, both in the personal life and mostly in the business that we all do in our own companies. But you have a better one about technology, Jose. Please share it with the audience. Well, I was, as I was saying, I, we are in the business of, you know, people meet people. But technology doesn't meet technology. I mean, it's difficult to see technology just talking to each other. So uh, we, we understand that at the end, we have to create an environment where people feel comfortable, have all the information, all what it needs to really create a network and achieve their objectives. Sometimes it could be marketing objectives or it could be also uh, public relation objectives or governmental objectives. The most important thing is that we have to focus on what is our business, meeting people with people. Harry? Well, I, I believe in what you said, that online leads to offline. That's how I met my wife. <laughs> That's how my son met his, his wife, and she, he lives in the U.S., she lives in New Zealand. But now, you know, it's a real relationship, not a virtual one. So I think we can use technology to find the right person. I mean, it's hard in a trade show, 25,000 people. How do I find those people I want? Technology can help. But in the end, it's about people meeting people. My daughter goes to a convention in Las Vegas, a travel convention, sits at a table, and vendors present for five minutes for two days. And you think a five minute presentation isn't worth it, it's totally worth it. Because she can pick up the phone and call any one of them if she wants. It's about people meeting people. I fully agree with this because uh, in the core, uh, in the core of the mice industry, it is people. Uh, technology is a great tool to uh, foster this relationship through finding the right person, as Terry said, or perhaps finding the right uh, 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 vendor for your activity in any case. So nowadays, for example, people uh, use the technology to, to make the first approach of what they will see or they will uh, participate in when they attend a congresses or conferences or trade show, uh, not only in Mexico, but abroad. So <clears throat> they improve their relationship, the offline relationship between people or among people. So therefore, uh, we have to take that always in account that in the core of the mice industry is people. Uh, some years ago, uh, some analysts predicted that because of the internet and the, uh, this uh, technology, the trade shows will disappear. On the contrary, nowadays technology has improved the trade shows and the congresses as a very important tool to develop businesses or to develop communities. But the difference is now that the people come to the show with very specific tasks, very specific findings they, they did previously through internet or through the websites or whatever technology tool that we have for the mice industry. So innovation, I, I believe nowadays is more related with strategic thinking on uh, taking the person in the center of the analysis. What are the needs, their desires, their uh, solutions that we have to offer them to gather all the technology, to gather all the devices and to gather all the shows and uh, conferences and programs, etc. So I fully agree on that. We have to put people on the core, on the center, in the very center of the, this strategic thinking to innovate. So Terry, in your book, you talk about uh, connecting ideas in particular. You have a chapter fully dedicated to that. And if we see a trade show or a convention is kind of the setting, it's an appointment of several interested people that are part of a community that the organizers put together. And, and, and you have the opportunity of interacting with technology in different ways, in different manners. And what about connecting ideas? What would be the, 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 the trends that you all see in the business to connect possibilities, ideas, to allow better business pitchings? What about sure. it? Well, you know, I think as a speaker, and I've been a speaker for 15 years, I think very you know, meetings generally have a theme but they rarely connect speakers to each other. You know, I usually ask, who's speaking before me? Who's speaking after me? What are they speaking about? And, and they don't do a good job because we could be connecting the idea all through the conference. That's why people have a theme, but they don't execute it particularly well. And we could do that with technology. We could always share so that we are reinforcing the same message, but it's not being done well, I think. I mean, well, <clears throat> yeah, uh, at the end, if we do not connect ideas, then nothing will happen. Because, uh, yeah, uh, remember that in the threshold industry, it's all about to uh, connect needs with solutions. Ideas, at the end. 
we have to, to gather ideas when people is looking for some, some alternative to do their, their job uh, easier or more productive. The other guys present new technologies, new products, new machines, etc. But at the end, it's connecting ideas. If we do not have the ability to, to put that in the center of this and share with the whole community you are trying to foster, then nothing will happen. So uh, I think that for the next future and in the long term, uh, trade show organizers and the mice industry organizers have to have this in mind, how we will connect ideas, how we will connect people, each other, to keep growing the, the community and of course, to giving a, a path to develop their uh, activities, businesses, culture, uh, recreation, etc. Okay. Well, one thing that is very important, and I'm an engineer already, it's that uh, all what we do in trade shows, it's being through a transformation because technology, it's bringing people together and it's, it's offering more information in every content. So we have to do the same at the show floor. It's very important that all the experience, it's different. Because if not, we will stay old with the, you know, the old model of having a speaker and then uh, 200 people sitting and listening to that. And now we have Facebook and Twitter and all that, that you know, makes you closer to the speaker. You, know? you can actually ask them things directly, you know, address your own problem. So what we're doing right now in our shows is reducing the distance between the expert and the people as listening to them. They're learning more, you know, through con uh, perfect contact with this speaker, with this uh, uh, group of uh, advisors that are presenting some you know, certain topic. So that is working pretty good. We did it in our first show. And we have the chefs being one meter away of other chefs we're learning how to do things. You know, formerly, we used to have this big top chef you know, uh, talking and doing all this performance, and everybody was sitting and saying, okay, this is the great guy. Now the great guy is you know, really sitting just beside you and, and stitching. That is very valuable. And that, with technology, it, it makes this very uh, valuable experience that we're looking for. So we want people to come to the show and really go out and say, I learned a lot of stuff. I learned stuff that I can apply tomorrow in my business. So that's the idea. Well, what I was hearing to you, I, I, I recall reading uh, in, in your book that, that you have to organize uh, to get in, I mean, the innovation flowing in your business. And that's, it's, a, it's a culture, it's a team, it's an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And there's a saying in the, in the mice industry that says, there's, there are kind of two types of attendance. The passive attendant and the active attendant yeah. for every single trade show or every single corporate event all yeah. over the world. With the passive one, you can put whatever opportunity you can put in, in front of him. It will be just a chance of bumping into it and maybe making a good use of, of it. But for the active participant, for the active attendant, all kinds of tools that, that will help that person to work the experience, to work the show, to work the crowd, to work the opportunity, that would be extremely valuable for them. But how about instead of just allowing them to find information through technology, what about allowing them to raise the proper questions using the technology? You've mentioned in, in, other, in, in other spaces the difference between technology using words rather than yeah. technology using Numbers. Questions, numbers, sentences, and other elements well, to put the right he, information. We were just, you just brought it up, reducing the distance between the speaker and the audience you know, and letting people participate interactively, I think is terribly important. And we also have to realize that people today snack on information. They don't eat a whole meal. You, know, you look online, articles are this long. So one of the things I do, for example, in my speech, as you know, I have 300 images in one hour. Why do I do that? Because two of them will respond to somebody. You know, I, I give enough data that I will, even the person leaning back, will start to lean forward when they see the right thing. So we have to give them lots of opportunities today because we're competing against so many other technologies. Trade shows are only one way they get information. And we have to, as you say, allow them to interact all the time. And you can draw people out online who would never raise their hand. Right.
because of, of the way they are. They're they afraid. Shy, man. Yeah. They're too prudent, or whatever. Exactly. And yeah. What about appointments, Jaime? How do you trigger more appointments for the attendants and the exhibitors and the people, the speakers, the, the experts, using technology and not necessarily using very complicated technology, but easy to access technology? Well, first of all, uh, in that regard, we are trying to disrupt the way we've been doing the things. No? Otherwise, we cannot expect different outcome with the same activity that we have been doing for several years. So we have to disrupt them no? uh, for a start. Uh, to start thinking of the needs of the people that we are inviting to be part of the trade show industry or the trade show that we organize. Uh, and then having that in mind, how can we uh, have the leverage for them to create a business appointments, to create the right conferences program? I, 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 I like what Terry said before that we are perhaps gathering the top-notch uh, speakers from the whole world in Mexico for a trade show, and sadly, they do not uh, uh, know each other, no? For a start. They don't interact. And you have, yeah, they don't interact, they don't know each other, and you have tremendous opportunity to, to foster the knowledge from those uh, speakers when you have it in, here in Mexico. So, yeah, disruption will be the, the, the main activity or the first activity. And then having in mind what the, their needs of the uh, attendance, the audience that we have in the trade show, will be the driver to try to develop the uh, 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 hosted buyers program uh, or um, uh, specialized buyers program or whatever kind of programs that we can develop. But the more important is to disrupt the way we have been doing the things to elaborate new options and new, uh, uh, new offers for this uh, more and more demanding uh, attendance. You know, in cities like Mexico City, and it, this is happening in, in Singapore or in, in New York, it is quite complicated to get to the venues. No? Traffic jam are always tremendous obstacle to get here, for, for example, to get this. Forget about location, no? Well, there are some locations, to say, the, to say the truth, that they do not have these problems, but for example, Guadalajara, no? But Mexico City is, is awful. Not only in Central Banamex, not only in Mexico City World Trade Center, but in Central Vancouver too. We are, we are facing that. So we have to be very clever to analyze that and use the technology and use the strategic thinking to change a lot of paradigms. So we have to break paradigms. Why the trade show industry, why the trade shows in Mexico City has to be open from 1 to 9 p.m.? Why? Well, because since 20 or 30 years ago, we have been doing that way. Why not at midnight? Why not at midnight? Why not on weekends? Why not starting in the morning? If we, if we uh, do that strategic, uh, strategic thinking and, and take in account the most important part of the show, which is people, then we are going to be that uh, our trade show industry will fall down more rapidly than, the, than in the long term. Okay. Yeah, it's interaction with uh, the people and their activities, everyday activities, it's every day more complicated. So your agenda gets you know, full of activities you have to do. And one of them is trade shows. So in order to you to put a specific time to attend this trade show, you really have to to know that you're gonna find a solution for your need, or you're gonna meet someone, or you're gonna learn something new that you don't know at the moment. So you have to manage expectations properly. Yes, and, and that's one of the things that it's it's more difficult. Tracial will tend to reduce the, the number of attendees if, if, if the organizer do not commit to content. That's why we say content is king.